Hey guys, we are back with another YouTube, YouTube, another YouTube, another wow. YouTube video. Remix. Okay, remix. Back at you. What's up, friends? You know, we're excited about this one, this video, as we are all our videos oh because y'all, we're doing yeah. that Q and A. Doing we'll get to know us. We've actually never done this, yes. so it just feels really special. Yes, and you guys have asked us a lot of cool questions, and we're like, we gotta answer them. We gotta answer them, and the yes. first one is probably about my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> it's a latte. Let me grab those questions. Wicka, 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 wicka. Oh, it's gonna be like a cut. <laughs> what we did is we're saving the specific relationship ones for another video. Yeah, we had, there were so much good questions, we had to break it up into parts. Bring and there parts. were some questions that fell on the person si personal uh -huh. side, some fell on the relationship side. So Here we're gonna we go. do another Q and A just for the relationship stuff, but this is the personal stuff. Don't you stuff. worry, you're so we, little your questions did not go two ways. Um, I'm from the Caribbean and came to the States as a young TJ. Like, why is your voice <laughs> I don't like that? know, I don't know how to be normal. As a young teenager, I would like Frederick to talk about his childhood in the Bahamas and his journey to the U.S. So I'm from the Bahamas. I came here for college, came here for school. Um, I said I wanted to be a computer engineer. There was a big newspaper article about me. Uh, student <laughs> athlete of the year. Uh, some guy. Pretty normal. Read the I had a lot of newspaper yeah. articles about me as well. You know, mm -hmm. some guy saw the newspaper article. Uh, turned out, he asked his friend, a drinking buddy, if his drinking buddy knew me. Turns out, his drinking buddy was my next door neighbor, and he came over to my door and knocked on the door and said, you need to go to this college, and he was the C he was one of the board members of that college. Next thing I know, two weeks later, there was a scholarship in the mail, and that's how I ended up in the United States. Have you ever been before? My family would take trips to the U.S. once a year, uh, ever since I was small growing up, uh, so I was very familiar with the United States. However, I was not familiar with snow and I left from a tropical place to the most cold, coldest place in the world, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. If you haven't been there, don't go. No, go. <laughs> Just don't go in the fall. Don't go in the winter. That was kind I of I feel like journey. you didn't, you left out the part where you said there were a lot of girls on the pamphlet. Oh yeah, I, did. <laughs> I noticed when I got there that there wasn't a lot of girls at campus. The ratio was seven to one, guys <laughs> to girl. It was hard in them streets. But those pamphlets, it was like but, all yeah. sunny and female. Yeah, every every college pamphlet they sent me had like girls on it, grass. I saw grass. I never got one uh, brochure or pamphlet that had snow on it. And if they had sent me that, I probably wouldn't have gone. I uh, did computer engineering in school. I uh, got my MBA. Uh, I also played on the, the basketball team at the college, D2 school. Uh, mm -hmm. Four year starter there. And how'd you end up in Texas? Oh, so I graduated and I had a friend and family that lives in Flower Mound, Texas. I said, move to Texas for opportunity. And, and you I, were thinking about moving I was, to other yep. places. I just ended up in Texas. I was like, eh. It almost wasn't. And truth be told, I thought it was just a bunch of people riding horses and tumbleweeds. Did you actually think around. that? Because I've always wondered for ah. people who do, aren't from Texas, why do they actually think that? Okay. That's what they showed in the movies. That's what they showed in the movies. What you actually <laughs> think people in Texas are yeah. like or what we're doing. Like, I didn't really <laughs> thought that, but part of me Especially did Especially if you're from that. another country. So I've been to Houston a couple times before that, but still. Houston. Still. I didn't really know what Texas was about because then all you see is pictures of Fort Worth people riding horses and cowboy they hats and boots. they actually do ride horses. And they do do that. Y'all, I actually got this question a lot how tall am i yes is it because i look ginormous is next it, to bedroom i am five eight yep. okay and, and three quarters <laughs> no i'm not five eight and three quarters so i'm mean, barely i'm like five right, eight and three quarters i'm right at five eight okay like i'm out where did you grow up i was born in fort worth texas downtown and the hospital. Okay, my parents moved to St. Louis. What? It's a Midwest Give me to her. I need some. No, no, we're saying different song. To Kindergarten, where? I moved to Arlington, Texas. Back what? Texas. And then we moved to Texarkana, Texas. Well, then we moved to Parker, Colorado. And then I went to school in Boulder, Colorado. So you all, At the you University all. of Colorado Buffaloes. Woo, 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 woo. You, how do you choose the name Haven? So I definitely had that name when we picked out Zane's name. Yeah, we thought we were having girl. a girl the we first time around. We were convinced we were having yeah. a girl. 
wrong. So it just kind of stuck. Um, it means all safe place. We kind of know place. what Haven means. No, I didn't know that. But it has been a struggle in the first couple of weeks of Haven's <laughs> life for me to actually call no, her by her Haven name. Haven is not a hard word it, to say. <laughs> like I literally has been, I forgot her name many times. And Have like, you guys ever heard uh, Haven? Uh, Let us know. What was each of your birth weights as babies? You two are producing some athletes. Yeah. So genetically you both would have been nine pounds or close to as babies in birth weight. False. Wrong. I was seven pounds, eight ounces. I think I was seven, seven. And about 21 inches long, I think. I think I was 28 inches long. No, she don't know how long she was. Oh, do you as an interracial couple deal with the stares in public? For Frederick, looks especially from black women and Jacqueline from Caucasian men. I am used to it because, and let me just say, there was a time I wasn't used to it. And that's going all the way back into college. I dated a black guy in college, so, but that was harder for me to experience that. Because it was like, you're 19, 20, yeah. and it's like... You're in this vulnerable state now i just feel proud and excited <laughs> it's like it just does not phase me we've walked into places like in the deep south where just stairs and these weird stairs like entire restaurants yeah, and, I and just diners like, and stuff and you're okay like, y'all like go to the city and find out yeah personally i love it i love when people <laughs> stare at us they're seeing a representation of the body of christ mm. because we're all one body and we're all designed differently from God and mm -hmm. we all should work in harmony being and loving and toward each other. If it's someone staring at you because they think that you're their race so you should be with yeah. their race it can also come from a place of I feel like lack like yeah. you feel like well, I don't have someone so why are you yeah. with that guy when you oh, can come over here all, you're and taking be all our good our... men. God has a whole sea of people exactly. and there's so many blessings and opportunity for you. Like, because I'm with Frederick, I didn't take away from you, white exactly. guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, experience it, because you ain't gonna experience it anyway. Um, in my dating relationships, it did make me a little bit more nervous, especially being in white communities yeah. and like all, feeling judged all the time. And, yeah. um, and but then I thought, I mean, what does he, he think? What does Frederick think when he walks into all white? Like, that's nothing in comparison. He gets it regardless of if he's walking with me or not. I love it. So, oh. <laughs> dude, I think they're staring at me just because of my shoes. Okay, moving on. Oh. If you could live any other place but Texas, where would that be? I have a heart for LA still. Nice. So, I think. While everyone's running from California, <laughs> like there's they still got that good weather though. There's still a piece of me that loves Los Angeles and loves yeah. the people and the creative scene. I would live six months in LA, three months in Dubai, and three months in Japan. Boom! Dubai? I Next really like going to Barcelona. So yeah, Barcelona's awesome. I could awesome probably too. live in Barcelona. What is your favorite shoe in your collection? Fandrake hooked me up. <laughs> With some Yeezys, so you even know what you even know what type of Yeezys those are. Five hundred. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. You know what color? Bone. Stone. Stone. <laughs> my favorites right now is still my Fair God ones in the spruce colorway. Mm -hmm. Shout out Jerry Lorenzo. Mm -hmm. My other favorite shoe right now. If you watch our last video. Is the shoes that I got the L, took the L on. <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's, in your collection. It's out of so. my collection, but it's going Moving to be. On. Which is those Jordan Retro One Moving Bio on. Hacks. Bye. Those are gonna Bye. be my favorite shoe. When do you have account any accountability in the area of your faith with Christ? Our accountability. We're account accountability. I was gonna say we're accountable first to each other. We have checkpoints where we ask each other. You know, how are you feeling? What did the Lord tell you? Or what do you feel he's saying? Whether it's for you or our family. And, and we also have like um, friends that we talk to and are close friends of ours that we would go deep with and talk about, you know, how's life? How, what's the Lord speaking to you? How can I pray for you? One is gonna be us because we are one. And so the Holy Spirit is here and constantly speaking to one another. Yep. Um, but mostly about ourselves. So just think the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about you so you can be better for that person. So Frederick, like I give him full permission to call out things and yeah. to be that voice in my life. Because I'm your rear view mirror. Because he's my rear view. Actually your side mirror. Side, he's my mirror. With friendships, like I don't give that open book or that um, 
the permission backstage pass backstage pass to everybody your friends like even if it's two or three that yep. really really know you they know your dreams yeah. they know your marriage situation yep. they know you don't your have heart. to be a, don't like, have to be a million just just get a little a little handful a little handful i two give them full permission to yep. say yo <laughs> Like, are you spending time with yeah, God? You're like, being weird. You're I'm curious if Jacqueline's parents fully embraced uh, your relationship from the beginning. Yes, they did from the beginning. They did <laughs> at the beginning. So we do have a lot of videos on that. If you look up any of our interracial yep. videos, you'll find that. But at the beginning, yes, they were very yep. um, accepting. Um, things did take a turn. Yep. And as a family, we had to walk. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm just co-signing. Like, yeah. As a yeah. family, um, we had to walk through a bunch of untangling, and um, it did get really yeah. rough. And there was some opposition. And there was some major opposition yep. that only strengthened us in yep. time and able to help others who are walking through this very yep. thing. And then it turned around again. But then it turned around again. So God positive. is a redemptive God. Yep. And when you're walking through hard things, especially when parents don't accept a relationship yep. that you fully believe God is telling you to go forward in, even if it looks like the just the worst thing, like yeah. it, God can turn that around. And it's exactly what he did. Because before my dad passed, Fedrick and my dad, like... Um, just my, I swear, Frederick was like my dad's favorite. <laughs> he even said his best day of his life was when he was golfing with dad with, with Frederick. And yep. I thought, wow, I yep. feel like we had a lot of good days. I so. took over that number one spot. <laughs> and now my mom have a good relationship. Yep. As long as you're obedient and trusting God, <laughs> you know, he, he'll take care of the hard stuff. What's your work experience? Oh, okay, job, okay. career testimonies. What Go have ahead. you done? I graduated with a degree in communications. Um, almost finished my business minor. Uh, was one credit short. That's the story of my life. And I moved back with my parents after college. And uh, my parents closed on a home and decide, my dad decided that's where I needed to work at a title company. So I took a job there for a year and a half. And surprisingly, a job popped up here in Dallas. Um, to work with Condé, Na Condé, Nast, Condé Nast, Condé Nast Publications. So I was a sales assistant for Bon Appetit, Condé Nast Traveler, and then I moved into being a marketing manager for Teen Vogue, Vanity Fair, and The New Yorker. And I, Blog. <laughs> the midst of all that, blogging was becoming a thing. Yeah. And so this was pre- If you didn't pre know. Pre-Instagram day. If you didn't know. And so I started a fashion Your blog. Your girl was huge. <laughs> okay, wow. <laughs> she was on CNN, okay. she was on oh. ABC, okay. she was like, on TNT. This is not what this video is. She was um, on HBO. Yes. So I work with a lot of brands and a lot of different companies again before instagram days like can you imagine there was only a few people doing this blogging thing before it became influencer like i said i've done a, like a lot of other type of jobs like he was a studio manager i, I, I was a project that. uh coordinator manager for um a studio working company. with michael's crafts and dollar general Good and job. those kind of brands i really felt my heart or in my heart that the lord was calling me into ministry and i didn't know what that meant yeah. but felt like i wanted to work um with at our church we met at here i became a senior assistant there that until the lord told me to leave and go full time at home working on this channel and um, all things creative and music and yeah. all the things. I did some retail stuff, uh, just holiday retail stuff. I experienced the joys of people in the holidays that are shopping. <laughs> people get crazy. From there I uh, became a developer, software developer uh, for a software development firm. And then felt the Lord told me to leave it and ended up at working for a church. Started in a cafeteria, working in a cafe, and then ended up working for the men's ministry, mm -hmm. which is coincidentally the same church she ended up working for after I left. From there, I went and worked for a another church that was like a church plant of the church that I originally worked for as their uh, IT director, and a part of their ministry staff, doing a lot of stuff uh, with service, making sure it ran smoothly in the background, and 
also uh, transitioning services. From there, I became a cybersecurity analyst, and now I am a DevSecOps development engineer. So develop, yeah. How do you fancy? Yeah, DevSecOps. DevSecOps, <laughs> sex? not sex. A Dev sexual officer? <laughs> a DevSecOps development engineer in the cybersecurity IT environment. I'm not a freelancer. I work for a company here in uh Because you guys are Texas. always probably wondering yeah. why he's always at home. <laughs> yeah. But it well, is we're a working pandemic, from home. guy. And I work, and that does beginning. sound like a crazy job though, a dev sex op. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what that means. Okay, engineer. moving yeah, on. Uh, what do you aspire to achieve with the lives you're living? Well, one, being a follower of Christ. Can you put some I table? want to live my life giving him glory Can you put it on the table for and following him all the days of my life. I want the Lord at the okay. end to say, well done, my faithful seat? daughter. So it, oh. <laughs> I want our marriage to be fruitful and yeah. successful. And at the end of it, Frederick and I truly to be best friends who are more in love than the first day that we got married and our kids. Uh. Um, to steward them well yeah. and to propel them on to be world changers in life. I want to wildly dream and then wildly do it. How many languages do each of you speak? One. <laughs> and a little bit of Espanol. If yep. both of you had the choice of a dream vacation, where on the planet would you go? Oh, Japan. I would go to Paris. Ooh, good so, choice. And what's one thing you like and don't like about one another's culture? One thing I took a little while to understand is just how the the Latin culture and they're so tight knit with family and just like holding on in to each other's business. All up in each other's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the one thing that like was the hardest for me to get used to is how Frederick doesn't celebrate certain American holidays. <laughs> Why would he? I mean, he's never done it. Even though you've been here a really long time, so you should you should be celebrating it. Patrick, what do you do when you spend time with God? Worship. Um, I go through a devotional of some kind, and then I just asked the Holy Spirit, "What are you trying to speak to me through this?" What I read, I write it down, I journal it. I think that's it. Then I get up and leave. I mean, that's like anywhere between like ten minutes to like an hour on a really awesome day. Right? <laughs> Instead of like diving into worship or diving into the word i like make sure i'm communicating with god as i would a friend so i love communicating and then i love worship like yep. Frederick, and i love singing because i think that just sets the tone of thankfulness so i'm all over the board sometimes it's a devotional sometimes a book sometimes i just open my bible and say lord speak to me now and then i love journaling and i love hearing god's voice for the day and kind of prophetic journaling. Here we go, I'm gonna do this, these next two by myself. Um, while Frederick is on toddler duty. So it says, Jacqueline, can you talk about self-confidence or self-image, especially after babies? And you look great, you look so confident and so pretty, what? Is there something in particular you do or did bounce back after giving birth, health-wise, lifestyle changes, or things you notice you used to be able to do or to eat that now you stay away from. First of all, you were so sweet. Like you make a mom feel real good. Okay, real good. One thing I did learn from my first pregnancy is you know when they're like, yeah girl, just eat whatever. Um, see there's some weight that's baby and some you just did it to yourself. And I definitely did it to myself with Zane. So I ate all the fried chicken, all the water burger, all the tacos. I was having the time of my life. So I ate way more kale than I would like to and drank way more smoothies with Haven. It was just like a commitment to myself. I think even now I'm just like, okay, let's 80, 20 it. Let's during the week, let's eat pretty clean. I mean, it's, it is a journey and it's a progress and I'll get back to you when I start working out. Like, I can barely move up two stairs. What is your honest status with your relationship with God? I just am feeling um, like, yeah, I'm just in this new season of just hearing God's voice and trusting Him in the action. That's where I feel mostly challenged is just from, to remind myself that um, He's proud of me. And that's what I feel like the Lord's speaking over me lately. And he's saying that to you too, is that he's 
proud of you. Regardless of what you've done or accomplished. Do I think my prayer life could be better? Yep. Do I think my time could be used more wisely? Yep. Do I think I could talk to God more? Yep. So I don't think you'd meet anybody who would say that they are just a hero. Just doing hero things. Like, of course, if you love God, you always want um, to be closer to Him. And so I think that's a daily, a daily thing. Okay, guys. Thank you for joining yes, us for this Q&A. It got video. real wild at the yeah, end. Seriously. You know, this is real life. Again, I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Yes. And um, thank you again yes. for participating in this. It was Hit so that fun. thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe yeah. button. Bye. True love, True love always. <laughs> Bye. Wicka, 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 wicka. That's going to be like a cut.